Hello, story lovers, and welcome to another episode of Around the World in 40 Tales. My name is Doreen Vanderstoop, and I am here with my fellow Storytelling Alberta member, the one and only Kathy Jessup. Welcome, Kathy. Thanks, Doreen. I'm very excited to be a part of this series. Now, usually I try and duck off as quickly as possible, but I do uh, want to say that it feels a little bit like a 40th anniversary explosion today, because not only are you here on Around the World celebrating our 40th anniversary, but you are also the curator of Tribute Tales, which is another 40th anniversary initiative. Can you tell people a little bit about that? Sure. So we have, as you said, two series going on. I mean, what an abundance of stories. Uh, Tribute Tales, which I curate, uh, launches a new story every Tuesday. And this series, which you curate, launches a new story every Thursday. And the, the difference really is that um, Tribute Tales has reached, reached out to friends that we know around Canada and different parts of the world who have been a part of Storytelling Alberta, usually by becoming one of our guests or, or being one part of one of our concert performers or our festival guests, things like that. So at some point they've come through Storytelling Alberta and enriched our lives. So I reached out to them and then they have agreed to participate and, and give us a story. Um, whereas this ser series is really cool because it features our own members, past and present. So that's sort of the main difference. But Tuesday, Tribute Tales, and Thursday, Around the World. Well done. Well explained. And today, of course, you are telling a story from Haiti called Sweet Misery. Now, before we get into that, I do want to tell people a little bit more about you. So Kathy Jessup is an Edmonton children's writer and storyteller who has been entertaining audiences since she first learned to talk. Over the years, she's performed her original stories and world folk tales in schools, libraries, concerts, and festivals across Canada and around the world. Kathy's stories and articles have appeared in various publications, including the children's magazine Chickadee and the Alberta Centennial Anthology, Under the Wide Blue Sky, Alberta Stories to Read and Tell, published by Red Deer Press. Now, Kathy also has lots of great content on her website, so do visit her there at www.kathyjessup.com. Now, before we dive in, we would like to acknowledge, in a spirit of respect and reconciliation, that Storytelling Alberta operates on the traditional territories of the Indigenous signatories to Treaties 4, 6, 7, and 8. And these lands include the Métis Settlements and the Métis Nation of Alberta. Kathy, please take it away. Thanks again, Doreen. I am delighted to share one of my all-time favorite stories today, and it's perfect for this theme, and it's simply called Sweet Misery. So it was a beautiful day in the jungle. The sun was beaming down, there was bird song in the air, flowers blooming all around, and a woman was making her way along a path, and she had a large gourd on her head full of honey. Now, being such an incredibly gorgeous day, she let her mind wander and she was thinking of different things and she wasn't really watching the path all that closely. And when it came under a tree, there was a root sticking up and her foot caught that root and she stumbled forward and fell and the gourd came down and crashed into pieces, honey everywhere. And the woman cried out, she went, oh, misery. Papa God, why do you give me such misery? And then there was nothing to be done. So she just gathered up her skirts and stepped over the mess and carried on her way. Now, there was a monkey up that tree and he had seen everything that happened and he was very curious. And the minute that woman disappeared from sight, he scampered down the tree and went over to the mess to have a look. Now he'd never seen honey before and he smelled it and ooh, it smelled pretty good. And he got his courage up and he poked at it and it was sticky. And so then he had a little taste and oh, wow, it tasted so good. Monkey could not believe it. What was this stuff? And so he began to have another taste and another taste. Then he got a gourd, a little shard of that gourd in each hand and he's scooping it up. And pretty soon he has licked up every speck of honey you can get off the ground at all. And yet he's greedy, so he wants more. Oh, I gotta have more, I gotta have more. What is this stuff? But he's thinking to himself, how can I have more? If I don't even know what to call it, I wouldn't know what to ask for. Huh, think, think, think. And then it occurs to him that when that woman fell, she called out a word. And what was it? It was something like mis miser misery, misery. Yes, that was it. Misery. Aha, monkey thought. 
that must be what this delicious stuff is. Misery. Oh, misery is good. Misery is sweet. I want misery. But how can I get more misery when I don't know where that woman came from and I've never seen it before. I wouldn't know where to look. Huh. Think, think, think. Then he had another idea. He said, you know, when that woman called out misery, she was talking to Papa God. So Papa God must have the misery. And Monkey decided that very moment he was going to set off and find Papa God and get himself some more misery. Now, nobody had actually ever seen Papa God, but everybody said they knew where he lived. At the edge of the jungle was a big mountain that disappeared up into the clouds. That's how tall it was. And everybody said that Papa God lived up there, up in the clouds. So Monkey set off to find Papa God. And he worked his way all the way through the jungle till he got to the base of that mountain. And then on his little legs, he climbed all the way up that mountain, up and up until he disappeared into the clouds and he was kind of feeling his way. And finally he thought he was on the top. And so he called out in a big voice. He said, Papa God, I need you. And after a minute, a big booming voice answered him. And it said, yes, monkey, what do you want? And monkey said, um, Papa God, I want misery, please. There was silence for a minute. Papa God said, are you sure, monkey? Are you sure it's misery you want? Oh, yes, Papa God, nodded monkey. Misery is sweet. Misery is good. I want misery. And once more, Papa God asked. He said, monkey, are you sure it's misery you want? Yes, 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 Papa God, answered Monkey. In fact, I want all the misery you can give me. Okay, said Papa God, wait. Well, Monkey is jumping up and down from one leg to the other. He can hardly stand it. He's thinking of all that delicious misery he's going to get. After a few moments, Papa God's voice is back. And with it, a big bulging sack tied by a rope that is coming down, 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 kathunk in front of monkey. And Papa God says, now monkey, in this sack is all the misery you could ever want in this world, but you can't open it here. You've got to leave the mountain, go down to the jungle. You've got to go through the jungle till you get to the desert. And then you've got to go out into that desert so far that when you look around, you don't see another living soul. And monkey, only then can you have your misery. Do you promise? Oh, yes, Papa God, promised the monkey. And of course, it was an easy promise for him to make because he didn't want to have to share any of that delicious misery. Okay, said Papa God, off you go. Well, going downhill was tricky, but it was the easy part. Monkey had that sack in his back and he stumbled his way down the mountain. Then he got to the jungle and he had to lock that sack all the way through the jungle until he got to the desert. And then he starts pulling that sack all the way out into the desert. And by this time, he's hot and tired and thirsty and hungry. And finally, he lugs that sack so far, he puts it down. He thinks this has got to be far enough. And he looks around. He can't see another living soul. He decides to open the sack. So he starts working at that little knot and he's fussing with it and fussing and finally he gets it undone. He takes the rope and he goes around once, twice. And just as he's coming around the third time, the sack bursts open and out jumps a snarling, howling pack of wolves. And they set upon Monkey and they start chasing him. Well, Monkey's only got little monkey legs and they've got big wolf legs and they are gaining on him. And he is running for his life and he knows he can't run forever. And finally, at the last second, he just calls out. He goes, Papa God, Papa God, save me. And there, in front of Monkey, out of nothing, out of, out of the sand, rises a great big tree. And Monkey scampers up into its branches and <sighs> he's safe with those wolves snapping down below. Hmm. Well, what did Monkey learn that day? He learned, if you go looking for misery, you will surely find it. But too much misery is never very good, even 
for a monkey. <laughs> there you go. That's absolutely delightful. <laughs> and uh, you did a marvelous job. Thank you so much for your gift of story, Kathy. Beautiful. Pleasure. Uh, if you anybody wants to reach out to Kathy, then they can contact us at storytellingalberta at gmail.com. And uh, of course, um, as Kathy talked about, you can check out all our stories for around the world and tribute tales on our website at storytellingalberta.com. So warm thanks to you, Kathy, for joining us today and to all our listeners for joining us. And next week, Thursday, we will be back and we will have another tale to tell. Take care.